Welcome to the state capitol. We're here at Golden One Center in Sacramento on Spectrum Sportsnet for the 2022 CIF State Girls Division 5 Championship between the Shalhevet Firehawks from Los Angeles and the San Domenico Panthers from Marin County. And we welcome you, Gortside, alongside Allie Clifton. I'm Rashawn Haylock, and it seems like it's been too long, Allie. Finally back here in the state capitol playing for some state championships, the first of 12 games over these next two days. Too long indeed, Rashawn. It's been two years. This is what high school athletes play for. It's the best time of year. And to kick things off, the 12 games that we have, you're doing it with high school hoops in the month of March, celebrating International Women's Month. Let's do this. History-making day for Shao Hevitt, the first Orthodox Jewish high school to make it to a state championship game, and they're led by a good one in Yali Schwartz. Yali Schwartz, 5'9", sophomore guard, who has dealt with injuries down the stretch, but has, ha has found her groove over the last four. 14 points in the South Regional Final. She comes in as the head of the snake, floor general, who really makes the Firehawks go. On the flip side, when it comes to the San Domenico Panthers, Summer Jenkins is your go-to superstar in every facet. She's an all-league player who averages 14 points, four assists, five steals. She is feisty. She'll take you off the dribble, but she can knock down the long ball as well. The Firehawks will have their hands full. This morning, starting lineups, Talia Tazabi, Davina Benoyahu, Ariel Grossman, who had five three-pointers in the SoCal Regional Final, along with Talia Tibby joining Schwartz, and for San Domenico, Noku Mukukula, along with Piper Fleece, Maya Sakowski averaging a double-double on the year, and Lily Reeser joining Jenkins. Let's send it over now to the third member of our broadcast team, Kristen Lago, rocking the sidelines. Good morning. Good morning, Rashawn Shell Hevitt High School making history this morning as the first ever Orthodox Jewish school to make it to the CIF State Finals game. And while head coach Ryan Coleman tells me the girls are very excited and proud to be here, the only unfortunate thing is that they won't have a sizable crowd here in the arena today. That's because many of their families do celebrate the Shabbat holiday when the Orthodox Jewish faith from sundown on Friday to sundown on Saturday is a day of rest. No no electronics and more importantly no traveling so they won't be able to come out today that's especially unfortunate because on the flip side san domenico they have the day off from school today so they will have a very large crowd here in the arena today Rashawn, ryan coleman and mike fulton something in common they coach both the boys and the girls fulton actually stepped aside from the boys this season this is first year coaching exclusively the girls at san domenico danielle milburn wendy tomita you and olivia larkin are officials we are playing ball here in the 2022 state championships from Sacramento. San Domenico controls the tip, nearly losing the handle there are the Panthers, and it's going to carry out of bounds. Last touch there by Salkowska, and Shalhavet first in the first, tur first turnover of the game. You feel the nerves, you see the excitement, the emotion. You love the energy right out of the game. San Domenico dropped off like a whole root of us, and they're opposite <laughs> us right now, Ali, and they are loud. That they are. Here's Tibby. Firehawks swinging it around the horn. We talked about Schwartz early on, and she's fouled with five seconds left on the shot clock. That foul's going to be charged to Summer Jenkins. So this is a concern for Coach Fulton, worried about Jenkins getting in foul trouble. Says she has to stay on the floor this morning. Five steals a game lends to her ability to get down in a stance to defend, but also when you're out on the court, puts you in positions to where you may find yourself in foul trouble. Defending without fouling will be key for her. You know, Yahoo, the sophomore guard, kicks it out to Zabi. Misfires on the three, but the rebound is corralled by Schwartz. Fresh shot clock here for the Firehawks. Corner three, Grossman needs a bounce in and out. Oh, insomnia. You love the patience early by the Firehawks. That was one of their keys, ball movement. When the ball is not moving, they become a bit stagnant. So as long as that ball is moving, good things happen. Nice cut there by Schwartz to the basket, and we have our first points for the Firehawks. Shall have it dropping back in that zone, Allen. Hands up, taking up space. 
forcing the Panthers. Just five on the shot clock. Sykowska tips it out to Jenkins with three. Baseline jumper, no good. Rebound taken by Schwartz, and she's going to take it herself. Yali Schwartz, the 5'9 sophomore for the Firehawks. Ben Yahoo, another sophomore. It's a very young team. Not very deep at all. Just seven players on the entire roster. Here's Tibby. Nice pass, but swatted away, and it's going to be San Domenico basketball. Here's Yali Schwartz. Great cut. Good footwork. Lays it off the glass. Defensively, the Panthers trying to be active. Fleece. Short on that three as well. So this zone forcing San Domenico to take a lot of three-pointers here in the early going out. That's exactly what the Firehawks want to do. Force you into contested mid-range jump shots, and they've done that here in the first couple of possessions, one shot. Decided size advantage inside for the Panthers. And travel there against the Firehawks. Just under five and a half to play here first quarter. First of 12 games over the next two days. We'll have them all for you right here on Spectrum Sports Net and Spectrum News 1. Firehawks basketball. Just take a look at Mike Fulton there. He was the boys coach. This is the second season coaching the girls at San Domenico. First season coaching only the girls. He's been at the school for 16 years. And back-to-back -back state titles at Branson in 2007 and 8. And another travel here, this time charged to Tibby. Little nerves in the early going here. You expect that playing in this large NBA arena. Playing for a state championship, 10 a.m. I mean, you're used to being in history class right now, a homecoming <laughs> or something like that, right? Homecoming. <laughs> <laughs> or, or, wait, no, home room, home room. Homecoming, there we go. Yeah, I think you can expect a lot of what you're seeing. It, it takes about a quarter to settle in, you know, and, and as you mentioned, the bright lights, it's one thing that Coach Coleman was talking about. It's one thing that Coach Fulton was talking about. You don't want it to become too big. Coaches understand what this moment is all about, and the quicker you're able to settle in, nice defense of attack there out front by the Panthers, but the quicker you're able to settle in, the better off you will become who you have been that got you to this point. Here's Jenkins in the passing lane. Summer Jenkins leaves it. Layup, no good there by Mukukula. Tibby really dragged that pivot again. Cross court pass. Attacking now is Tizabi. Find Schwartz around Mukukula to the hole, laying up and in. Yali Schwartz going off the bounce that time. Great move, composed shot fake. You mentioned off the dribble straight to the rack. I said homecoming, really my secret <laughs> desire to be the homecoming king. That never happened. My brother won, so I live vicariously through him. Younger brother, that is. Firehawk slowing the tempo here. 3.42 left in this first quarter. Benoyahu, three-pointer up and in and out again. This time to Zabi. Quickly the other way is Fleece, leaves it. Sykowska unable to get it. They're getting great looks. San Domenico looking for his first field goal. 0 for 6 now to start. Tibby, five on the shot clock, Schwartz, nice shot fake, Schwartz denied, Sykowska, coming back the other way is Fleece, she's got Mukukula once again, and there's going to be a foul. Foul underneath on the Firehawks, Beno Yahoo. and Schwartz, don't want to see that if you're Ryan Coleman, coming up. 
Talk Ooh, about Layman. rim protection. Maya Zakowska coming off five blocks. Defense on that black back line. She averages five per game, and you see Schwartz was slow to get up there. And right now, talking to head coach Ryan Coleman. See, she came down. Looked like she came down on Sykowska's foot. That's tough. Don't want to see that, especially here in the state championship game. Look at the storyline we've talked about coming in as well. She missed six weeks due to an ankle injury. You hope it's not the same one or as severe. She's battled through it to get back to this point. Seems to be in a bit of pain right now. Looks like they're going to take her to the locker room. Out here. So a timeout on the floor. Ryan Coleman will talk to his team as you see Schwartz getting carried back. They're making her way back to the locker room, I should say. Take another look at it. You see Allie? Mm. Yeah, it's tough. And she ran into her own teammate there as well in Grossman. That's tough. And I mean, look, Ryan Coleman talked about this. They had a game earlier this season where they lost two of their key players. One of them was Schwartz. And so this team has kind of had to change its identity throughout the year and be able to play while shorthanded and still been able to make it here. So a huge blow. But this team has been tested, and they've been in similar situations like this before, Allie. Yeah, they always say experience is life's greatest teacher. Number 10, Davina right there has handled ball handling responsibilities when Schwartz was out earlier this season, so you look to her to run the offense. Yeah, Coleman says she sort of learned on the fly during that time, kind of pressed into the situation. 4 nothing Firehawks. San Domenico looking for its first field goal. They're 0 for 7. Three of those have been from beyond the arc. Going up against this zone here of the shot have it. Firehawks. Here's Fleece. Cross court pass, corner three. That one ricochets off the front of the rim. Sykowska with the other opportunity. That three missed by Conklin. And a layup opportunity there, no good by Reeser, and it will be going the other way. It's gonna be a foul on the floor. And you take a look at Schwartz, and appears to be in some pain as they're looking at that right ankle. Look, she's tough, she's a competitor. She wants to be out there. It's not easy right now. Turnover here. Summer Jenkins coming back the other way with it. Nice ball movement. Reeser, wide open look at three. Can't get it. They just can't buy a bucket here. San Domenico. Approaching 120 to play here in this first quarter. Tibby. Tazabi with it. And this one nearly stolen away. Sticking with it is Tibby. Three-point attempt up and good. Coming off the bench is Kupferman knocking down the triple. This is what we're talking about with the Firehawks. Their patience and poise to keep the ball moving offensively. Ends up in a great shot. San Domenico missed his first 10 field goal attempts, and they finally get a scratch there. And it's Conklin, the sophomore, knocking down the mid-range jump shot. Well, that averages will weigh out. They are good shooters. They know they can connect from outside, which is what the Firehawks are making them play right now, and they get one to go. 7-2 our school. See this harassing defense by the Panthers. Take a look at that Firehawks three. Steps into it nicely, turns, knocks it down. San Domenico, though, right back, offensive able to connect on the jumper as well maybe this starts to turn into more of that offense that they know they can play
cut for me. He checked in for the injured Schwartz. Tazabi fouled on their way to the cut. They're going to call it on the floor. Foul charge to Jenkins. And that is that her second? That is her second. And so rough shooting to start here for San Domenico. Now you got your top scorer in Jenkins with some early foul trouble. Something Coach Fulton didn't want to see. He's trusting her right now, leaving her on the floor. Here's a steal. Aguirre, who just checked in off the bench. Aguirre all the way off glass. No, Coughlin there. She's got all the points for the Panthers. That's why you run in transition. You're there for the offensive rebound, offensive putback. Way to finish and close out the quarter. So they missed their first 10 shots, but Coughlin, a couple of baskets here to end this first quarter. We'll step aside after one. Firehawks by three. Tazabi getting the basket. Bank shot up and in there by Reese. She may be known to knock down the three ball, but right there puts it on the deck. Bank is open. Nine six our score here. Conklin came off the bench and gave Coach Fulton of San Domenico some very good minutes at the end of that first quarter. Driving, hanging there is Tibby. Misfiring there, but she'll earn two shots. We've clearly seen Nine, six our score here, second quarter action from the Golden One Center. This is the CIF State Division Five girls Basketball championship, Talia Tibby at the foul line. Misses there. Reeser had a basket. And Tazabi while we were away. San Domenico, after starting 0 for 10, has made three of its last four. Shalhevich missing their star player, Yali Schwartz, who went down with a presumed ankle injury in that first quarter. He's getting it retaped last we saw. Hope to have an update soon. This one high off the backboard. No good rebound taken by Cuckman. First of 12 games here from the Golden One Center over the course of these next two days. Of course, we'll have them all for you right here on Spectrum Sportsnet as well as Spectrum News 1. Cuckman, she hit a three earlier. That one. Rolls off the rim, offensive rebound, that one deflected, and Mukukula ends up with it. Coming back the other way now is Conklin. Oh, and she throws it off her teammate. Fortuitous, right back to San Domenico. And look at that, a trail three shot for reason. She is their three-point specialist. She was ready, she was waiting. She let it fly. We got a tie game. San Domenico all of a sudden catching fire here. And the defensive pressure starting to pick up as well for the Panthers. We talked about that first quarter. Both these teams play relatively well first quarters. But it's the second quarter all season that has given the Panthers some 
concerns. They average the seven points in the second quarter. And that's reversely a quarter in which shall have it excel. So this could be a, a turn of the tide here if these two teams hold to form. San Domenico now on a 9-2 run. Let's check in with Kristen. Hey, Rashawn, I was able to go to the sidelines and check in with Shal Hevitt's leading scorer, Yali Shorts. I did confirm that it is her right ankle that they're looking at right now. That's the same ankle that she has injured in the past. She's still in some visible pain right now. They were able to untape the ankle that she started the game with. They're retaping it right now, but they're still unsure if she's going to be able to return to the court today. Rashawn? Thank you, Kristen. Schwartz, you can just see the pain, the grimace there on her face. She was able to put some pressure on it. She walked there to the trainer's table without any assistance, but clearly the mobility was not there. So hopefully they can get retaped and she can find a way to get back in this one. Firehawks certainly need her. Down to just six players now. Shall have it. Who they will rely on heavily and at this point not knowing when your star player will return one you've got a floor general in Davina who has been in this position before understands what is going to be required from her as a point guard but it just means that your margin for error becomes that much more smaller defensively lock in offensively stay on a string be a team research Conklin, she's been hot off the bench. Can't get the three there, but he gets her own rebound, saves it in. And this one's gonna be an over and back. Look, right now the Firehawks are executing their game plan defensively. Their arms are wide. They're forcing Domenico to play outside, make it tough for them when they do put the ball on the floor. How do you weather this storm here if you're Ryan Coleman? You trust what you got you here. You trust in your teammates. You lock in. You've got two and a half quarters left playing for the one thing that you've worked all season for. Corner three shot. Rebound off to Conklin. Reeser looking to push. On the wing. And that's Fleece getting the layup. That's how you beat the defense in transition. And a turnover. And then you're rewarded on the defensive end. Right here, you kick it up, you look ahead without hesitation, straight to the rack. You get back in transition, strong finish, and then you force a turnover. Aguirre, there's Conklin with it. Mookie Cooler right back to Conklin. Little two person game and a turnover there. Great idea there though by Conklin. But unable to connect there with Mookie Cooler. A couple more subs checking in now. Sykowska returning to the game. Maddie Greenstone, the 5'10 sophomore, in for the first time this morning. Three-pointer stops the run there. Grossman. She was huge in the SoCal Regional Final. Knocks down a triple there. And shall have it back in front. Greenstone can't get the jump hook. Sometimes it can be the toughest part of defending within a zone. Is finding a body to put yours on to box out. One shot and out. Firehawks doing a good job here in the first. And a travel there called by Tibby. Three forty-five left in this first half. All of a sudden, we got a back and forth affair here. Firehawks by one.
six champions will be crowned on this Friday. Chavet and San Domenico right now. Coming up next, we'll have Chafee and Stewart Hall for you. That coming up at noon. All the games you can see on Spectrum Sportsnet or Spectrum News 1. Rashawn Haylock, Ali Clifton, Kristen Lago here with you. 12-11, our score. Been somewhat of an onslaught here of late from San Domenico after just a treacherous start. Greenstone foul, she'll go to the foul line. Take a look at the profile from San Domenico. Small school up in San, El San and Elsmo. Mike Fulton there, the head coach, trying to be the first to win a Division Five state championship at two different schools. He won two at Branson. And there's gonna be a lane violation there. Speaking of Coach Bullen, I just love his energy, his passion to be coaching girls hoops. On our call, even today when we met him face to face before the game, just thrilled for the coverage of girls basketball. Um, and you can't hear or say enough about that. He's got a good assistant with him as well, Ariella Rosenthal, right there to his left. Let's send it over now to Kristen. Well, the word of the huddle for the Shell Have It Firehawks was extra. Coach Coleman telling his team he wants to see them make the extra step, the extra slide, and the extra hustle. Today is the extra day. But it was Captain Talia Tibby who had the last word, patting each of her teammates on the back, telling them, let's go, we got this, reassuring them as they enter these last three minutes of the second quarter. Rishon? Big stretch here, you would imagine, for the Firehawks. Long three, trying to go glass there is Tibby, unsuccessfully. Neither team, neither team shooting it primarily well from three, a combined three for 17 from beyond the arc, these teams. Dolly Schwartz, leading scorer for these Firehawks. Out with an ankle injury, he's yet to return. Went down with that in the first quarter. Firehawks trying to carry on without her. Down to just six players now. Here's Tizabi. Runs into some traffic, throws it up, gets her own rebound, back up, and she's fouled. Good hustle and effort there to stay with it. Recognized it was off. Continue to fight for the board. This is what Kristen was just talking about from Coach Coleman in the huddle. You're under man, you're without your star, making the extra play, trusting your teammates. Again, you got two quarters, two minutes, and 32 seconds. You leave it all out on the floor. Jillian Bizjack checking in for the first time. 5'9", senior. One of three senior captains on this team for the Panthers. Both teams now combined 0 for 5 from the foul line. And a turnover. Mukukula returns. Saikowska will have a seat. San Domenico, it should be noted, also without Summer Jenkins, their team MVP. She got in some early foul trouble. Good ball pressure. And you like the effort. Yeah, foul charged up high to Aguirre. There's Jenkins. Team MVP, all league guard for the Panthers. Had 22 in the regional final against San Francisco University. I gotta say, I know exactly what she's going through. Unfortunately, when it comes to foul trouble, I had my fair share of those moments, and especially no, in the first years. half. You, all you want is halftime to come to reset and have a fresh second half to go out and give everything you have to your team. Me, guess what? <laughs> My dad agrees. Kupperman loses the handle. Three-point attempt, Reeser long. 
rebound corralled there by the Firehawks. Here's Tibby. Top of the key now, Ben Yahoo puts it on the deck. Nice corner pass there, in and out, Grossman, but the rebound there, oh, unable to get it there is Kupferman. And we're gonna have a foul underneath. There may not be a lot of fans here for the Firehawks, but the ones that are, are being heard. They love the effort there, the second chance opportunities. That's why you crash the glass. Some of them on their feet sitting right here courtside. That that appears to be the entire Shall Have It fan contingent. Mostly just parents of these players. But they are having a big assembly watch party, if you will, back on campus. So I want to say hello to all of them if they're tuning in. We do. Shout out to all of them. I know this is hard. Again, I, I told the story. Coach Coleman, I shared it with you guys. I had a college teammate um, who, was a, who was an Orthodox Jew as well, uh, Nama Shafir, and, and went through the same exact things. You respect the religious views. You respect the sacrifices as they get one to go down right there. Tazabi there with the bucket. You talked about your teammate walking in the North Dakota cold. Yes, she would travel with the team, not able to attend shoot arounds um, during Shabbat. And um, when that happened, you know, we had a teammate walk with her to the arena, about two mile walk, having to take a couple breaks because it was negative degree temperatures. But it's what you do. It's what you do for your teammates. Uh, and, and so for those who aren't in attendance today, we feel you, we understand uh, the spirit, and, and we, we know that this team appreciates the support. Um, and, and those that are here today, obviously, it's an incredible story. We certainly on the stage. respect it, absolutely. And her second personal 14 foul here against the Firehawks. So two second differential between shot clock and game clock. Here's Aguirre, just giving them some nice minutes off the bench with the foul trouble to Jenkins. Fleece. And Tibby gonna hold for the last shot here. Three quarter court pressure put on by San Domenico. Tibby trying to get around it, throws it up. No, we're gonna have a foul, and it's gonna be against the Panthers. So Tibby will earn two foul shots. And they get Mukukula for the foul there. That's her first personal, 18 foul. They say Tibby was shooting, so won the shot, so she'll get two foul shots. Still looking for our first free throw make in this one. Got jinx it or no? I think that is uh, one of the broadcasting rules, like broadcast 101. And you know, I'm just trying to will one in, you know? <laughs> I mean, these teams are 0 for 7 from the charity stride, 0 for 8 now. All right, I'm going to stop talking. <laughs> Long heave, no good, and so that's how we'll end this first half. Chalivet, 14, San Domenico, 11. You got to appreciate the poise from the Firehawks here, weathering the storm uh, despite the injury to Schwartz. No. That's exactly what they did. They trusted in one another. They continued to stick to their principles, moving the basketball offensively, forcing San Domenico into tough, contested shots on the defensive end. You got to be proud. Let's send it over to Kristen, who's now with Coach Coleman. Coach, you kept San Domenico scoreless through much of the first quarter before they find some rhythm in the second. What was leading to some of those later defensive breakdowns? Um, not getting back on defense. Our transition defense was really poor. Um, you know, not having our, our best player and our anchor who does a lot on both ends of the floor, we're going to have to make some adjustments in the second half. You talk about losing Yali Schwartz. We still don't know if she'll be able to get back on the court, but if she's not, what's the biggest adjustment you want to see your team make in her absence? Well, fortunately and unfortunately, we played a large portion of the season without Yali. She had this same injury. She re-aggravated it today. Um, so we're capable of playing uh, the brand of basketball that we want without her. Right now, we haven't done that, so we'll get in the locker room and hopefully talk about what we need to do. Thanks, Coach. Rashawn? Thank you, Kristen.
Halftime here inside the Golden One Center. At the break, Chalavet Firehawks lead this. Halftime here inside the Golden One Center. Shao Havet on top of San Domenico, 14-11. Take a look at some of the first half highlights. The big news, Jolly Schwartz going down with an ankle injury in the first quarter. She did not return her alley. Yeah, and she started off through five minutes, two of three. She was on a roll. She had four points. But look, her team has stepped up. Just like Ryan Coleman said, they are capable of playing their brand of basketball that has got them to this point. They carry a three-point lead for San Domenico. It may have taken a minute, but with a little bit of poise and patience, they settled in and made this a game. Conklin inside out. You like the position that you're in, just a three-point ball game. Firehouse out-rebounding San Domenico. You take a look at the three-point shooting. Neither team doing particularly well, but San Domenico inside that presence. Blocking shots has been huge. We'll step aside. Second half coming up. Ryan Coleman in the red, his assistant Andrew Schultz there on the shall have it sideline. Second half starting here now from Golden One City. The Firehawks with a three point lead at intermission. Mukukula with the offensive rebound. She'll try a 17 footer, gets the bounce, 
and the Panthers within one. Ryan Coleman said ball movement and defensive rebounding were some keys for his team. What did you think of the ball movement in that first half, Allie? I loved it, especially without your star player, your ability to stay poised within yourself. And as Kristen reported out of the huddle early, trusting one another, it is okay to pass up a good shot for a great shot. And that's what they did in the first half. And they're winning boards. Plus so six in the first half. And San Domenico just four offensive rebounds in that first half, which was huge. Here's a three-point attempt. No good there by Fleece. But there's an offensive rebound, fifth of the game, as we just talked about it, Alex. One shot now will be key. You know that San Domenico will come out with everything they have over these final 16 minutes of game action. Including that young lady right there, Summer Jenkins, couldn't get the runner, but here's Kupferman. In the starting lineup for this second half, of course, no Yali Schwartz. Left the game with an ankle injury in the first quarter, has yet to return. Tibby nearly loses it. Sits on the shot clock. Nice pass underneath, but a block shot there. Sykowska, no. They're going to get it for a foul. You know, another thing that you need to focus on, too, if you're the Firehawks, is taking care of the basketball. Without Schwartz out there, you just saw one of their assistant coaches talking fundamentals at the top of the key. Can't afford, you can't afford to turn the ball over. Free throw attempt no good by Tazabi. There's Jolly Schwartz there. A lot of pain for not all of that physical. I imagine she a lot of frustrations and emotion going into the moment in the stage that she's on and not being available. You know, she's fought all season long to get to this point. We talked about it before the game, the groove that she found herself in over the last handful of games coming into today, and then to only get to play five minutes. It's tough. Three pointer up and good by Fleece. Panthers back in front. Prior to that, that was the first free throw make of the game. Alley. That went to Tibby. Handling the ball right now. Looking in the paint. Kupferman. And that one carries out of bounds. You see the energy for San Domenico as you take a look at this fleece bucket here. Making the extra pass. Her coach says that she doesn't need to score, but she will. And she stepped right into that three-point shot and knocked it down. And now for her defense. Floater there by reason, no. And Kupferman there for the off for the defensive rebound. Tazabi hands it off Tibby. Dribbles it off the foot of a San Domenico defender and here comes the diminutive police. Jenkins Steps into a three. Oh, in and out. Wouldn't stay down for her. Jenkins, three fouls in that first half. Her and Sykowska had three fouls each. That's something to watch for the San Domenico side. Meanwhile, Muka Kula giving up her body on the floor. Touchdown. You knew that San Domenico would come out with a different kind of edge, and they're starting it on the defensive end. The pressure, the ball pressure out front, back-to-back -back possessions. Piper Fleece looks up court. Summer Jenkins to Maya down low. Her versatility, 6-1 frame. She runs the court so well, rewarded with an and one opportunity. How about the pass there from Fleece? It took all of her 5'3 frame to get that there. She put it there on a dime. Let's send it over now to Kristen Lago. Well, that's exactly the type of offensive production Coach Fulton told me he wants to see from his team in this half. Looking at San Domenico, they opened the game shooting less than 23% from the field. He said it was hard to watch, but he knew it was just nerves. He told them in the locker room, I have four all-league players. You need to play like it. Their defense will carry them through, but their offense will win this game. Rashawn? Thank you, Kristen. Nice pass underneath, and no good there. Point blank range to Zabi, but she'll get to the foul line. Kupferman now with three fouls for Shao Hebert. 
So that's something to watch. This team down to just six players with the injury to Schwartz. And Kupferman with three fouls. Look, this is what basketball is all about. It's a game of runs. San Domenico is doing what they are supposed to do. They've settled in. They regrouped at half. They came out with a different kind of energy and prowess. And now it's about the Firehawks' willingness to respond. We talked early with standing any kind of run and storm, especially losing their star player. These next few minutes will be critical. Largest lead of the game for the Panthers. And a turnover there. Of course, Addy, as you know, big games like this, it feels so much bigger than it is, right? A lead or a run has that kind of an impact. Yeah, but in the second half of the state championship game, I'm not sure it gets much bigger than this. <laughs> Nine on the shot clock. Tibby, no, follows up her own shot, and she'll get to the free throw line. Talia Tibby dislocated her kneecap in the non-league tournament. Just came back to the lineup two weeks ago. One of the top ball handlers on this team, along with Schwartz. And talking about a game earlier this season, TB dislocates her kneecap, Schwartz hurts her ankle all in the same game. And so you got to kind of figure it out. And as Ryan Coleman told our Kristen Lago at halftime, Fortunately or unfortunately, this team has been in situations like this before, having to be down without one of their best players or multiple of their best players. And so find themselves in that situation here this morning to play for a state championship. Look, injuries are a part of the game. Adversity, though, it teaches you a lot about yourself. Mark Coleman is very proud of his group, understanding what they've gone through to get to this point. And that's why he's so big on trusting what got you to this point. Those free throws there by TB into 7 0 run for the Panthers. Corner three, short there by Fleece. And rebounds off to TB. Talia TB, and that's offensive. Once you extend, Allie. Speaking of, I did that a lot, <laughs> along with the shoulder dip, but I love her pursuit. She has stayed downhill this entire game. Just a little bit too aggressive, and when you do it right in front of an official, more times than not, you're going to get called. But I love the pursuit, the aggressiveness to get to the rack. How about the minutes Aguirre has given San Domenico here this morning? Not really a scratch on the stat sheet, but she's come in, kind of weathered the storm when Jenkins went out with that foul trouble, takes that big charge there. She's really giving them some really good minutes off the bench as Coach Fulton talks to his team. Look, that's a part of being on a team and playing team sports is understanding your role, starring in your role. And you may not be a starter, and it's not always about who starts, but how you finish and what your contribution is to that success. Everyone has a hand in it. We'll have Chafee and Stewart Hall in the boys' division five coming up next. That one's slated to tip off at noon. LaSalle and Oakland Tech in the girls' division three at 2 p.m. And that should be an interesting matchup. Contrasting styles between those two teams. Oakland Tech, who many believe could be or should be in a much larger division. They're going to come in here with a chip on its shoulder and something to prove. A lot of exciting action for you here today. First of six games today. First of 12, of course, for the next two. Three and a half to play here in the third. Five on the shot clock. Reeser goes up the floater and she got it. Not sure how she even saw the basket from that <laughs> angle, Allie, but she gets it to fall. It's a five-point lead for the Panthers. Nice little runner going left. Tippy the Euro, too strong. It's her own rebound, though. Fresh shot clock for the Firehawks. Skip pass is tipped out of bounds. How does she see this bucket here, Allie? She's supposed to be their three-point specialist, but she says, no, nah, I can put it on the, I can put it on the deck. It doesn't matter what you see. As long as the ball goes in, especially at this point, Rashawn. That's all that matters. That's all that matters. That's all that matters. Three-point attempt is good. 
Grossman, and they're going to need her to knock down some shots. Ariel Grossman gets the Firehawks within two. Big time shot. Back door, Reese are off glass. Good, beautiful ball movement. That's how you respond to a three ball. Quick ball movement, gets it down. Low straight off the glass. Reese scored the last two here for San Domenico. Under two and a half to play here in the third. Ball deflected and stolen away. Here comes Conklin, the first half hero. Bounce pass across the paint. Mukukula, no. Rebound corral there by Tizabi. Coach Ryan Coleman imploring his girls to move the basketball. Tibby. Tremendous defensive pressure there by Nina Swain. And it's going to be a jump ball. Possession arrow favors shall have it. 30 30 nice shot there. Steps right into it. It's the friendly bounce. This is how you respond. Pushes it up. Look ahead. Reese are able to get right to the rim. Grossman throws that one up. No good. But an offensive rebound for the Firehawks. And Tibby is fouled. So she'll get back to the free throw line. She's what we call see ball, get ball. Her pursuit of the basketball. She's got an innate ability. Wherever the basketball is, she finds it. Second chance opportunities. Finds herself at the line yet again. Giving her the team an opportunity for two free throws here. Tibby with five boards to go along with two points. That one banks out. Firehawks trail by four. First Orthodox Jewish school to advance to a state championship. Not many fans here today because of Shabbat. Sundown Friday to sundown Saturday. But they're having a watch party back on campus in LA. Trying to implore their classmates from miles away. Playing without its leading scorer in Yali Schwartz. Long three, no good there by Fleece, but the offensive rebound is taken by Reza. Fleece attacks the gap, kicks it out. Conklin, good look at three, too long. Offensive rebound. San Domenico. And this is something Coach Coleman talked about. Having to finish possessions on the defensive end. Top of the key, Reason. And in the passing lane, stolen away. Firehawks. And they turn it right back over. What a good possession here. Offensive rebounding, ball movement, ended in a turnover last time out. Jump ball, possession arrow favors San Domenico. Their fans rising to their feet after forcing that last turnover. Look at that, you got, you got some baseball jerseys, you got team t-shirts on, hour and a half drive here for Marin County. No school today. Hoping to celebrate a championship as that one squirts in and out. It's a good possession. Shot clock is dark here for Shao Hebeck. Tibby with seven. The spin move into traffic and gonna get a foul. Tibby's gonna put pressure on you defensively. She's going to make you get up in her shorts, defend her, and she's gonna put the ball on the on the deck, draw two defenders. They called that last foul on Swain, under four seconds. Deflected off the back of Swain, on the deck, and...
Zabi. Firehawks within one. I love their relentless will to keep playing inside, pounded inside, giving them easy opportunities as they continue to finish them up. Fleece finds a gap, blocked away by Tazabi. Nice defense there by the Firehawks. And this one deflected out of bounds by Greenstone. San Domenico outscored Shall have it 13-7 in that third. First time they've outscored the Firehawks in a quarter today. Meanwhile, their star Summer Jenkins is yet to scratch. But marred by foul trouble in that first half. And that one deflected out of bounds. That time Conklin getting in. 12 seconds left on the shot clock. Obviously, we just saw the percentages. Neither team shooting well, but sticking to their defense. And they say defense wins championships. Straight away, three no good by Grossman. You're going to need it here. Here's Reza. Nice swap there defensively. And back come the Firehawks. Grossman catches and fires short that time. And out of bounds. She's got to keep shooting, Allie. She does, and she's capable. I mean, she's knocked down five threes in a game. They trust her to take the shot. She trusts the shot. Now's not the time to stop shooting. He's been shooting 45% from three over the course of the last two months. Here's Reezer, a deep three. No good. Rebound taken by Ben Oyahu. Tazabi and offensive. Ryan Coleman probably didn't want to seem to slow it down there in that aspect. Again, right idea, but you're early in the shot clock. In moments, situations, they can tend to speed you up. The better you are at staying disciplined and poised, patient, as we've talked about, especially with the Firehawks, something that has been on their side this entire game. That's the first foul on Tazabi. Only significant foul trouble is cut for me. She has three. She came in to replace the injured Schwartz. Firehawks down to just six players. Conklin, she'll try a three. She'll get a three. Avery Conklin. Six player off the bench for this squad. It's been quite the spark plug here this morning. Nearly an and one there. Big time shot there by Avery Conklin. What's so crazy is Coach Bolton says she's the Draymond Green of the team. We don't see Draymond hit a lot of threes, but Avery says, I got a couple for you. She's good at everything, and right there, steps in in a big time moment, knocks down the three ball. Tibby unable to get the foul shot. That's been a concern today for both of these teams. San Domenico's yet to make a free throw. Firehawks have gotten there. They just haven't been able to make them. Four of 17 now from the charity strike. Conklin was a starter at the beginning of the year until Sikowska became eligible. Sikowska, the transfer from Poland. Had to wait that sit-out period by the CIO. Grossman charged with a foul there for Shao Heavy. It's Conklin. Looking for Reese. Corner three. In and out. Good rebound. Good defensive rebound. Like every team in America runs off that. At every level. Baseline out of bounds. Here's Tibby. And there's going to be a foul on the floor. She's done a great job at causing pressure, creating strain against the San Domenico defense. But the team today just unable to 
that capitalize right at the free throw line. My bad there, Rashawn. That right there is an opportunity. Just one step sooner, you kick to the corner. You collapse two defenders. She's doing what she's supposed to do offensively when you put the ball in the deck, but when you collapse two defenders, though she finds herself at the free throw line if she's able to convert, trusting that extra pass and mentality that the Firehawks have utilized all season long. Shalhevin has a flight scheduled to return home around 2 o'clock today. There is a contingency plan in place in case there are any delays. And if so, that'll force them to stay here the entire weekend. Of course, in observance of Shabbat, can't travel after Friday night. Mukukula in the passing lane, Tibby, but Jenkins able to corral. Mukukula, nice shot fake, puts it on the deck, loses it on her way up. Nice defense there, Grossman from behind with the strip. Under five to play here in this fourth quarter. Got to give it to the Firehawks. I mean, after Schwartz went down, aside from maybe the beginning of that third quarter, they haven't flinched. They battled. Look, Ryan Coleman said it. We're capable of playing the brand of basketball as Noku drops. That jumper down baseline. San Domenico with a lot of response here. They like to get the ball inside, but we've seen Noku Mukukula be able to step out and knock down a couple of mid-range baskets this morning. Here's a three, long there by Tazabi. Gets her own rebound, and let's see a jump ball. This one's going to favor San Domenico. Noku here replacing the driver. She finds the open opportunity on the baseline, gets the jumper to fall. She's got six. Reese the high player for San Domenico with nine. She leads all scores. Looking for the lob underneath. That one read perfectly by Tazani. Firehawks down two possessions. Tazabi, the Euro off glass. Oh, the finger roll. A thing of beauty from Talia Tazabi in a timeout here taken by Ryan Coleman. What a move. It was very much needed. Talia Tazabi reaching in her bag. Now you see her, now you don't. We'll be back in a moment. Some storylines for the girls' side of the state basketball championships. Juju Watkins of Sierra Canyon named Gatorade Player of the Year. Sierra Canyon, Archbishop Mini, that should be a good one. Oakland Tech, they'll be playing at 2 p.m. later today. And shall have it. First Orthodox Jewish school to make it to a state championship game. And stay tuned. After this one, we'll have the CIF State Boys Division 5 championship between the Chafee Tigers of Ontario and the Stewart Hall Knights from San Francisco. Coming up next, along with a full slate of games for the rest of the day, all right here on Spectrum Sports Net. These are two of 13 teams making their state final debut. And this is one of two games that features two first-timers. Shall have it within two, and opportunity to tie or take the lead here. It turned over. Reeser, the steal, the layup, good. Timeout taken by San Domenico. San Domenico applying the pressure, anticipating the passing lanes. There, Lily Reeser with a heads up defensive play. Reeser now in double figures with 11. She leads all scores. This one probably her easiest of the morning. She says, Game on. I'm going to apply the pressure. Has her hands out, active, rewarded offensively. Lily Reeser doing it and stepping up here for San Domenico. Their lead scorer, Summer Jenkins, yet to scratch, but look at Reeser's deck. Knocks down the three ball, the shot that we didn't even know she saw the rim or not, but it went down. She stays attacking the rim. She has been the highlight 
with Summer Jenkins in the foul trouble that she was in, she stepped up and made the right plays, the big plays, when her squad needed her most. Trying to go down and San Domenico lure, Lily Reeser, 5'6", sophomore guard. You talk about the youth of this team. You gotta imagine they'll be back in these next couple of years or so. Very sophomore Latin team. Lisa with her 11 points today. Their fans rise to their feet opposite us. Huge turnout here. School out today. How about that? There's still a line from our buddy John Ireland. Don't let school get in the way of education. <laughs> Three thirteen to play. Kupferman really lost it. Tazabi has been the bite spot here in the fourth. Couldn't get it there. Yeah, she has been. You talk about it. Nine points, ten rebounds, and scored both of the field goals. Her shot had that here in the fourth quarter. Just five on the shot clock, and Coach Coleman wants to talk about it. So draw something up here with five seconds left to shoot. 302 remaining in the ball game. Where do you think he's going here? Well, I think he's going to continue to pound it inside. I think it's worked for them throughout the course of this game so far. Not only that, but you pound it inside. You put yourself at an opportunity for free throws. And right now, that's what they need. They need points on the board. This the first of six today, the first of 12 over the course of the next two days. Chafee and Stewart Hall next to battle for the Boys Division Five Championship. But you look at today's slate. How about Venice from the LA City section? The city school gets here to Sacramento, no small feat. Winward, you talk about the numerous programs that have made it to this point this season to undergo a coaching change midway through the season. Vanessa Nygaard leaving her post there at Winwood to take the Phoenix Mercury job in the WNBA. That's a step up. A little bit. A <laughs> little bit. Ball's inbounded high. Arcing shot no good there as you called it, Allie. Looking for Tazabi that time and tried to tie up Sykowska, but it's going to be a foul call. Foul charge to Grossman. Maya there with a strong rebound down low, battling two underneath. Sajkowska, the transfer from Poland. As Fulton said, she cried, cried, cried in the locker room after the regional final win. She, there, there were tears of joy. Just doesn't have these type of opportunities back home where she comes from. Police trying to find a gap. Sykowska, and she walked with it. The school actually has dorms, so Sykowska stays on campus, but didn't know a soul here when she came. It's a pretty incredible story. Take a look at Yali Schwartz, top player for Sal Hevitt. Sideline since the first quarter with an ankle injury. But the Firehawks Got a shot here. Down by four, just over two to play, and timeout taken. So full timeout. Each team will have just one each after this. Obviously, you want to get things in sort. Don't want to have an unforced turnover here if you're the Firehawks. But where, where do you look? Do you keep going with the hot hand into Zabi, or, or do you try to wheel Grossman to a basket? You feel like she, there's a big shot with her name on it, right? Look Four of the, them if they're going to win this one. Exactly, Rashawn. They've got capable scores. They can do it inside out. As you mentioned, you've got Grossman who can knock down the three ball. She's proven that. But I also think their relentless will to get to the rim puts themselves in a pretty good opportunity as well, but they've got to be able to knock down your free throws. Yeah, you know, free throws are a part of the game, and especially on the biggest stage, sometimes it comes down to that. Uh, and if you're San Domenico right now, 
keep doing what she's been doing. They've been patient with the shot clock. One shot and out. Their offensive rebounding the basketball. Got sped up by Maya that last possession. But it's over. It's done with. It's in the past. You love the leadership right here, the communication amongst the girls in their huddle. It's like their fans can just feel it, but there's still a lot of time left in the two possession game. See some of the parents from Shao Hevitt sitting here courtside. Balls inbounded to Tibby. And in this passing lane, Summer Jenkins looking for her first basket today. She gets it plus the foul. Hello, Summer. That's why she is your all-league guard. As her coach described her, a superstar in every facet. She starts defensively with the pressure in the passing lane. No one is stopping her. She absorbs the contact. Gets it to go. Free throw is good. Three-point play. Seven-point lead for the Panthers. Largest of the game. Approaching two to play. Their fans can feel it. Tibby high off glass. No, Sykowska. The rebound. Coach Fulton puts up the stop sign saying, hold up, hold up here, Sonny. <laughs> Muka Kula to set a high screen. And timeout taken by Coach Fulton and San Domenico. I beg you, no timeout. I thought they called a timeout. They call a foul on the floor. I beg your pardon. And Beno Benoyahu gets the foul there. So it looks like maybe Coach Coleman may be trying to extend this game here. He's trying to watch everything get sorted out here. This is where you put the exclamation point on the game. You step to the free throw line. You knock down your free throws. Reeser, the high player today with 11, steps to the foul line. We call those the spirit fingers for positivity. San Domenico rocking them right now. Trying to send all the good vibes Reeser's way. 5'6 sophomore having herself a day. Free throw is good. Nice follow through. They say you make them when they count, right? And San Domenico had yet to make a foul shot before this fourth quarter. Jenkins knocked down the first one. Sykowska with the offensive rebound there and a fresh shot clock. Coach Fulton screaming, get the ball out. Let's choose some clock. Eight point lead here for the Panthers. Mukukula out to Fleece. I think Coleman wants a foul and they finally get one, but may have fouled the wrong person in Jenkins. So this is the 19th foul. So one and one here for Jenkins. It's a great run by San Domenico. Close out this game, apply that pressure, capitalize. The offensive end. Jenkins misses the foul shot. Kupferman the rebound. So here come the Firehawks. Large hill to climb here. Kazabi can't get it. Offensive rebound, no. And Sykowska had it. Falls to the deck, keeps it alive, and finds Jenkins. One minute left. And Jenkins is fouled. <laughs> Tizabi picking up the foul there. And now it's double bonus time.
Talk about the job Coach Fulton has done here at San Domenico. That one rolls off. He led the boys team at San Domenico to the NorCal title in 2020. We're supposed to be in this game, but of course, the pandemic happened. And that would have been the first state appearance in program history. Just two years later, guides the girls here. And just seconds away from winning the first state title in school history. Mukakula the rebound and Tazabi fouls it. You know, I love when we talked to Coach Fulton heading into this game, and he mentioned that he was a bit surprised. You look down the roster, Rashad, this is a sophomore heavy squad. A young squad with not a lot of experience, especially no experience on this stage. But you think of the future of the program, his willingness, as he told us, to schedule tough in the preseason, taking early losses that teach you what you're made of, that show you what you're made of, that allow moments like this to feel that much sweeter. Both of these teams, the four seeds in their respective regional brackets. Luka Kula gets the foul shot. San Domenico having to knock off San Francisco University to get here. They need a two seed. That was the fourth meeting between the squads this season. The Panthers took three of four. Tibby, short. Shot clock is dark. And Fleece is fouled. Mike Fulton led Branson to back-to-back -to -back Division Five girls titles in 2007-2008. Just 17 seconds away from becoming the first to win this title at two different schools. What a second half for San Domenico. Came out of the locker room with a burst to start the third. And as you mentioned, Ali closing this thing out. And a big hug there from Piper Fleece, one of the seniors on this team. Shall have it. Throws up a shot, and it's off. And San Domenico has captured the girls' Division Five state championship title. Andrew Schultz there embracing Mike Fulton. First title in school history for San Domenico Alley. I'm getting emotional over here. I mean, I think you just, you look at the fans, you look at the girls as they rushed one another on the floor. So much of our world, of our country has gone through so much. And you just see it all come together through sport. You sue it through, team. This is special. Let's send it over to Kristen, who's now with Lily Reeser. Lily, this team was out there leading without your leading score in Summer Jenkins for the bulk of this contest. You step up in her absence, a game-high 12 points. What was your mindset coming into this? I mean, honestly, this is such a huge accomplishment for this team. We started from basically nothing. Our team has never even made it to the NCF playoffs before. Like, it was a huge deal. Sorry, championship game. 
But I mean, honestly, we just pulled each other up and held each other through it. And I mean, I'm really proud of everybody. We saw some of those nerves come out in the first quarter. You scored just two. How were you able to shake those nerves and close it out? I mean, honestly, like I had the mindset that this is such a once in a lifetime opportunity. And like, I just got to enjoy it and be myself. And you did enjoy it. Your whole school seems like they're here tonight. Yeah. How has this season exceeded your expectations? I mean, honestly, this is where we thought we'd be in two years from now. We have seven sophomores on the team, so we're a pretty young team. And I honestly am just, like, blown away, and I'm so proud of everybody. Congratulations. Thank you, Rajon. The youth movement is alive and well in San Domenico. Panthers win their first championship. Stay tuned after this one. We got the CIF State Boys Division 5 title between the Chapey Tigers of Ontario and the Stewart Hall Knights from San Francisco. Coming up next along with a full slate of games the rest of the day all right here on Spectrum Sports Net. Congrats to San Domenico. Your 2022 CIF State Girls Division 5 basketball champions. We got the CIF State Boys Division 5 championship next. So for Abby Clifton and Kristen Lago, I'm Rashawn Haylock. We'll be back here at Golden One Center in Sacramento in about 20 minutes for more coverage of the state basketball championships right here on Spectrum Sports Net.